if the site is completely open, the spike will surely be planted. As a matter of fact, Koi have two players to watch. They're really concerned about a flank coming in. Uh, except the fact they've got to worry about it. It's the spike massive planted. players now start building up around screens. The conglomeration back the here. The conglomerate is here. They're ready to come back and take what was once theirs. And they're looking here, ready to try and take one down. It's Trex the first one to fall as he drops off from high. Into a four versus four still with two out towards four inside playing the longer angles, but it's up close that matters and Wolfen doesn't want to lose those out. I didn't realize c -Ned was playing Jed here. It looked like he was gliding into elbow. Still two <laughs> more players coming in and Starzo is good to find One yet another win. really solid ah, post plan hold from down. And yeah, when you have two players coming in late for main two, you just absolutely shred that, that uh, screen's retake. I was really nervous at first because when we had the three uh, gearing up on screens and you had the two hanging on site, I thought, hey, this is a 3v2 essentially. The other two are at long range. You want to try and do damage from back towards One form, but it didn't matter. Wolfen just on site itself, finding himself a 3k, making that look easy for Koi. Yeah, Wolfen and Sarks who you can rely on. Yeah, what I love is the pace from that first round. It was oh, yeah. exactly like we saw yesterday against Heretics. And that was the big one yesterday. A number of times we'd see like on Fracture especially, five-man pushes, like bam, we're straight in sight. You can do nothing about it. It echoes some of that feeling of Navi going to have to adapt to play against that kind of speed. They've got the tools to do it. It's just about realizing that's the kind of game Koi want to play. Yeah, I'm glad you talk about the tools here because obviously when you're rocking both the Cypher and the Sage, that's a ton of sort of uh, flood denial. And on a, mm. you know, eco round like this, you're not going to be seeing much, but don't be surprised to see this Sage playing towards B Heaven, B Main, a lot of the rounds, maybe even paired up with a raise up in Heaven too. It's really hard to make full execs on the B side happen. When there's Sage slow orbs coming up from Heaven, Paint Shells too, you're usually going to get stuffed. Here, this round, they can get out though, because there's not util for Navi to fight back with. Pushing their way through though, and doing so quite aggressively. Found one, found two, Trex and Wolf, and kicking things off on that double duel list. And Navi now the ones are going to have to scramble. Once again, two, three players starting to all square up on the same position to try and push back in. Two have now gone in towards heaven. So wary of potential backstab from mid though here. No one's there, of course, as we can see. We have that beautiful mini map to be able to see what's going down. But everyone else is sat on site here. It's a bit too much to try and retake. Yeah, go. Nice shot there out of Zipan on the raise. But uh, yeah, hard to imagine they're going to be doing much. There's an instant swing ready to go from Stark. So whenever any contact is found, actually it's not quite there, but Trex is going to kill everyone, so no problem. Still, I think these first two rounds have given us a good idea of the prep work Koi have done coming into this map. Really heavy uh, focus put on watching that potential late flank deep into the round. Of course, because they are running the Viper as opposed to something like the, the Cypher, they don't have that perma info to watch their backside. So they're going to need some, some eyeballs on that one. <laughs> I'll keep a close eye on it. Technical pause coming in here for a quick second. We shall not start a podcast. I love yesterday. this. No, this is this is the exact right time. <laughs> right before a rifle round. And look, Navi, in classic Navi fashion, are playing some funky stuff here, right? Uh, you know, it, not every team is playing the, the Sages these days, but primarily it's the Fade. Very rare you see an actual info initiator on this map. The Sky is about as much active info gathering that you're going to see uh, on most maps. Although they actually did play it, I believe, once before, all the way back last year, not paired up with raise or anything like this, but basically the idea behind this fade is on defense, I think you can see it where it's like the classic raise fade stuff. They're sort of holding hands, which we have seen from them these first two rounds where they look to combo that utility. But I also think the fade might end up being used as some mid control options for them. Basically, uh, if you're cycling out, you know, haunt early round, wait 20 seconds, prowler, wait 20 more, you're haunting again, then prowler, you can get pretty uh, consistent information around mid or scouting out for potential lurks over towards the ace side. So it really de depends how they're using the fade. Are they using the prowlers early in the in the in the before the plant actually goes down or in the in the retake that prowler can be really effective at clearing areas out like hell over towards the B site or even uh, elbow when they're flooding out from screens. It's breaking up those rechargeables that normally you see teams use off the rip straight away at 140 with the one minute another. Sometimes at 20 they find themselves with time right but you're there saying break it down to 20 second yeah. blocks instead of rotate through it. Yeah, because uh, effectively, like, if players are walking up through mid, it's going to take them about 20 seconds before they're running into something. And, and Navi have a lot of different ways they can move around their setup. I think you could see early Sage walls over towards the A side. I'm never never a huge fan of, like, the insta wall, but if you're looking to farm orbs, and also that wall does shut down any sort of fast lurk attempts uh, from the enemy team. That's usually what the, the sort of isolated player on attack is going to be looking for. 
Um, but at the same time, you can just sort of uh, gather up around the heavens and look to pair not just the, the raised paint shells with the fade, but potentially those sage slows too. Now, on the opposite side, Koi rocking the double duelist. They have a lot of dives, so they actually have the ability to get past a lot of those, uh, those pieces, trying to keep you trapped inside a main. Uh, and that's where our eyes are going to have to be between Wolfen and Trex and how effective they are entering the site, because there's not always going to be able to be players coming in straight behind. I'm still waiting for this technical pause to play out here, so just bear with us. We'll feed you information as it comes into us. Mm. One thing I do want to take this opportunity to thank you for, Ender, is taking shoes off when we cast together. Yeah. There is quite a divide in height between us. I feel like a dwarf stood next to this man. And the last couple of days we've cast together, he's been so kind as to take his shoes off so he does come down an inch or two. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that final inch really does count to, to <laughs> bring me down just a little bit, so. Uh, you're welcome, you're welcome. Happy to help you out. Also, uh, to sort of carry through some lore, Right. If oh. you were watching the cast yesterday, you'll know that we were talking a lot about how oh, in the Valorant course. universe, the animals are rising up. The animal well, uprising is here. Here in Berlin, apparently there's a lioness on the loose that got out of the zoo. So uh, keep, your, keep your eyes out. If you're here in the Coliseum, you'll be safe. I heard, I heard from the makeup artists, it wasn't actually the zoo, it was a private owner. It was a private, you can own That's a what lion. I said. I was like, what kind of maniac like, owns a lion? Yeah, I thought that was like specifically a, a plot point in The Hangover with Floyd Merriweather, but uh, <laughs> is that, that's just a real thing now? I thought that was like weird, you know, film, you know? I've just had to play, by the way. I did get distracted there for a second. Oh, what's uh, the Coach audio is the issue. Two minutes will be the ETA, and then we had to get back into things. So, about those two minutes, and we keep talking about these lions. Now, I do want to talk, we can talk about maps, but I want to talk about Mitch and his seemingly unbelievable obsession. I, he, I, can, oh, he has a mane almost like a lion. He isn't too far off. Is that why he thinks he's my friend? Will he get down on all fours and start <laughs> trying to growl at it? Well, I don't <laughs> know. I've, I've never really seen Mitch uh, later in the day, but. Yeah. We're usually casting He the was first straight series. in there saying, guys, look, there's a lion in Berlin. I think I could make friends with it. And we're like, what? Yeah, that's uh, that's bold. Yeah. I and heard the he team was going to bring a stakeout or something. The team, the team something. here were like, we encourage this, but can we do it on Monday once we're done with LCQ? Or hear me out. If he does it today, Content. then we might be, you know, cast a few more games. Oh, that's <laughs> a good point. Yeah. You know, Mitch, go ahead. Go and do it today, my man. Like, get, get in there. <laughs> go we're crazy, in Mitch. Go crazy. <laughs> uh, anyways, these maps on your screen, I, yes. I, will, I will bring it to us because uh, we actually have the exact same map select. Effectively, these three maps were the ones that all the way back in, uh, in week one were selected. A little bit backwards. It was Ascent first, then Lotus. That Lotus was the absurd 20 to 18 match uh, between... <laughs> I don't know if anyone can actually hear that on the stream. <laughs> I don't stream. know if it's local or not. I, I have to, so <laughs> all I'm hearing is someone continually saying, be quiet, like in the game audio. <laughs> no, at first it was like, hey, I then think it was it's like, Killjoy. no. And then it was like, be quiet. Yeah, yeah. But she was talking. I, I really like, hope she's saying it for quiet. real. <laughs> can, it, can you hear that? Please communicate to us with a smiley face, a yes or no. The stream could not hear that. You uh, just sound okay. like a nut job now, basically. You just sound absolutely <laughs> mental. Well, oh, we can narrate goodness. it. We are going back into things. You're seeing the fist bumps, and that is the mm. eSports sign for things are okay and they are cracking on. So, in we go then to round three. In case you missed things, Koi won the first two. Quite a bit of pace in round one, roll into a pretty comfortable round two. This is where it starts to matter as that first gun round for Na'Vi. And this is the setup I was more expecting. So Cypher, a lot of the time, playing a little bit more of a deeper kill trip setup towards A. Sage Rays playing together around mid. Fade a little bit uh, deep Cover there, back out. screens. But that is A-OK. -okay. Now, uh, if you are not familiar with the way Angel likes to play the game, he likes to get real aggressive on yeah. defense. So don't be surprised to see him fighting aggressively in garage, using that fake teleport just to make sure Wolfen's clearing that close cubby. When he goes on in, but the power of Ray's uh, Sage is that you realistically, as Koi, should not be able to get out of this choke point. Omen on the entry in uh, Angel's hands. Mm. I know that he likes to try and make things happen sometimes. Cena did put the wall down in mid at 120, so that'll be breaking around 40 seconds, which does uh, put the time pressure on any sort of split hit into the site. I like that Cena is delaying it just a little bit, but if Koi want to do something, they're going to have to activate this lurk a little bit more, you think, from Shados. He has the orb put up on uh, a ramp, you can see, and that instantly pulls the Prowler out. So basically, you have uh, both the information of Cypher and of Xiao's fade, just trying to scout out and find where that Lurker is. But in five seconds, it's about to go crazy when the Swall busts. Well, in they go. That's it straight away. Smoke's out. Dog's on the march on through towards heaven. They see two. That's exactly the kind of information they were looking for. Now it's on to Wolfen to try and make something happen, but Angel's there. Immediately shaded out by the second duelist in this lineup. Left. And Koi are in a good spot to get control of the site here. Zip and they don't know about, though, and he finds one from back towards spawn. Oh, poor comms there. The smoke comes in about a second and a half too late. 
Just running across the opening. Trax is a nice position up in rafters and potential pinch in mid. He goes a bit early, but oh, now oh, it all comes down to down. Shados. Can they yeah. even get a plant down? There's only oh, 10, seconds 10 seconds in left. In such a great spot where he finds one, almost gets They're going to deny the, the plant. Gets away with it. And Zipan manages to crawl his way through. That's what they were looking for. The disruption is there. And now if you get the round. Ooh, the round gets a little bit cooked there from Koi. It was always going to be tough in the post plant, but without the smoke to cover, the, the spike getting going down just never ended up happening. And then one by one, they just got domed up in heaven. That's tough right there. You can see the star being placed on the ground immediately after, but good awareness from Zipan to go for the hunt, knowing that if you pull off the spike there to, to fight him, there's no time to actually put the spike down. Yeah, they knew that everything was riding on that flank coming in, and with that player held down by one, the rest of it was free to flood back on towards the site. Now we get the proper full round, though, for both teams coming out. Koi, of course, the previous was the bonus. This is where things get a little oh bit my. saucy. They're just full contacting into mid. A little bit bolder than I like to see. <laughs> and uh, no real opportunity to put down the wall either. We'll probably have to be a little bit deeper, although actually getting the re-smoke from Angel allows them to cross over. Holding hand in hand together. Seeing that it has a tiny little pixel you can play with if anyone was to jump up. But it looks like the protocol is around that 115, 120, trying to place down the wall. This time, however, because there are players in mid rate to shoot it immediately, they can bust it down. It is worth noting that after the changes to, uh, you know, bullets just having one less magazine, or rifles having one less magazine, that Sage Wall, if you're not breaking it instantly, does tank up a lot and can be meaningful in these drawn out rounds when you've already put some bullets into smokes trying to spam for a kill. Does thing, yeah, the value only going up as we move forward. Working their way through rope, so a couple of players looking maybe to wrap around here and join the two players that are now holding out towards the south side of that Viper wall, Viper itself, and the spike in Hand of the Sky. It's that flank, Koi, we're so concerned about, and this time it absolutely punishes them. Angel not going to commit, but now quite have to heat up. Only 30 seconds, not much time. And still trips they got to work through. they got to know what's going on here, though, as well. Angel's got to get moving if he wants to try and have any effect on this push coming in. But now, site looks to be mostly clear. They've got the jet all the way forward. Needs the second, but can't find it. CNED with the shutdown Black makes a very down. flimsy execute. And there's nothing left with only the sky left standing. Will be able to get the spike down for some brownie points. But that really is about all she wrote for this round. Now they're going to find their second in a row. Okay. How does Starzo get one there? There was so much util put onto him. Not going to be able to find much more than that, shall with the close, but yeah. Ridiculous. You've got to win those. <laughs> Starkso uh, always manages to do something a little bit absurd. And uh, really this round, as soon as Kolda dies here, it just got really scattered. It, it felt like a couple of times now Koi are, are sort of supercharging into the site. And I think this sometimes can happen when you are playing the, the double dive, the double duelist comp, is that you're so far ahead of the team that you just have to keep going uh, in a way. It's, it's hard to reset, especially because they'd already lost Kolda, which was their sort of defaulted smokes. Uh, yeah, you have the Viper, but the, the way you're setting up the wall and the orb is for the Lurk, usually. Now it's actually going towards B, which gives some more options to try and contact out onto the site, but you know Angel's going to be looking to play in front of that one. It's a good point you make as well with the two duelists wanting to ultimately be very mobility-based duelists as well. Their goal is to get as far forward as possible, backfill the space of their team playing catch-up, but Heaven is really the great exposure on the A side as well, makes it very risky to go pushing on through without much cover from behind. So this become a fine frags, create space that way, otherwise things start to look fragile as Na'Vi are now starting to prove. 100%. You can see that's the Viper Orb. A little bit different, but this one allows you to... The similar setup to like double Cypher Cages, where it blocks off both ramp and I've main. And trial. now they have ramp control. Even without committing the wall to this area. Counter Nightfall is going to be great scouting. Spot out three, maybe a fourth on the raise down into main. But again, now they're the ones that are suddenly deafened up and have zero idea as to what's going to come at them and from where. So it gets too deep on site, sees one, but Trex wins out the gunfight. That's a pretty critical one to win, as it now opens up for his team to move forward. But Xiao explodes from screens, finds one for himself, hasn't yet unlocked another, and site has been conceded to Koi. No smoke out into screen, so Xiao going to be doing a little bit of fishing here. Sees that player in spike main, and planted. the spike is eventually planted. You can see Navi first clearing out uh, vents, clearing out all these little angles behind him, and Wolfen with the knife just going for a little peek up into heaven. That's what he needs. They have a scramble back with Angel coming in on the backside as well. He's got to work his way through smoke, but it's all about on site for now. Two left standing, and the backstab in the smoke, going to find one for himself. Sprays left, but just a few pixels too far to the right. Sees his man and finds what he needs. And they follow the kills that need. Starks goes left by himself, finds one, can't get the last. 
Shao into his second 3k of the game, and Na'Vi on the back of Angel. Get round number five. Twice now, Angel has Damn. been able to just find okay. Calder, look in the opposite direction, and just tear up the round. That's the, the late round uh, insurance policy almost, I think, for Koi, that he's just completely disrupting. All of a sudden, Angel you thought was completely safe. You're getting pushed on on the opposite side, and yeah. The fact that he was able, even able to get Shados down here, that was a little bit ridiculous. Boy, Angel just loves looking for these flanks. And we said about them having to watch out for it. You're seeing it now more yeah. than <laughs> Barbar. The thing Honestly, is, too, just please, someone get me a compilation of the Barbar reaction. <laughs> we have so, so many. So good. More, more, just more. give us more. <laughs> yeah, I, I think there it was even Angel just like looking for the timing down ramp, which was really, really nice. Now, defensive pivot. Pivot, this is the A main wall I was talking about that allows a little bit more of a heavy stack towards that B side with a trip, a camera up in B heaven. I think Koi realize often that will mean A is softer, will mean Cypher won't be behind it. So that's why they're looking to quickly get into vents. And you can see really from Navi, it's a little more passive in the angles they're holding as well, right? They know they're coming up against an eco round for Koi where they've got a couple of stingers on side. They've got the Spectre. The, f the longer range you can keep these gunfights, the better. And it's just paying respect to Koi and how fast they can explode onto you with that double duel is set up. Yeah. Well, it's going to explode real quick here. Oh my god, was he able to scout down into that with the teleport? I don't know, I don't think so. Wolfen mm. finds that kill, and as the Sage Wall breaks, that leaves a real, real soft. This is the weakness of having all your info on one side of the map. Like, Angel just has to fight that with Cena, and they fall. Smoke comes out, but it's on the top of it as well. There's going to be a scrappy here inside of heaven. Koi found one for themselves, immediately traded out. All comes out on top, and Koi are making this work. They've got to a 4v2 on an eco here, and, uh, Spike and a great position to pinch back into heaven. Trex playing deep into vents. Mm. Guns really looking like the issue. They haven't managed to pick any rifles here from members of Na'Vi. They're putting the dirt. So it's going to be still about looking for it's those close save. range firefights. So be careful. Are they going to save on it as well? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can't win this. It's planted for heaven. There's an Astra Star on it. You don't have the time or the, the bodies to actually re-clear main heaven screens. Like, so little chance you're actually coming away with that round. But uh, again, I think this does expose a little bit of a, of a weakness in the way Navi played. Yeah, you have the guaranteed safety of the Sage Wall for 40 seconds, but as soon as it goes down, even before then with the vents pressure, having the Fade and Cypher stacked on the same side of the map, like they've been doing most of the game, does come back to bite them here. Good little read as well to not road retreat their way through spawn, acknowledging that's the likelihood where they'd be when they got out of heaven, didn't hear them going any other way. To get that balance now where we saw the first two rounds for Core, you know, started off strong in the pistol with the pace, and Na'Vi reacting, this one here. Really good eco round coming out from the side of Koi, and you've got to give it to them as well. We saw this a couple of times yesterday, actually, if I to recall, it was Heretics who won a, no, was it Heretics? It went Koi? both ways. There, there, was a, there was quite I a few think Koi, egos yesterday. Koi won a really weird five, uh, 2v5, if you remember, and the next yeah. round completely flew, uh, threw away a thrifty to the other side. Yeah. It was ridiculous. Nothing made any sense yesterday. It, it did was not. Sort of how that but it was went. a great series. That is 100% true. Now, Koi, really aggressive setup. Four players into B main. No raise in this area. Makes it a little bit har harder to stall, but Angel back here can jump peek, and the paranoia is such a great line that you can't really scale on past it, although they managed to regardless. Managed to get their way forward, but Angel, of course it's Angel from out of nowhere finding the kill. Seen it into a second, and just like before, even though it's not quite a four by round, Na'Vi were looking to make this work for the most part. Still into a four versus two. Shade off the left one, left standing. <laughs> and just like that, the economic advantage is gone for Koi. Yeah, um, B main executes, I don't think are going to be it. <laughs> <laughs> I really think this is the most insane part about, I mean, the, the Omen compared to an Astro. Astro, of course, has the pull, which can be powerful for, like, actually getting a kill, but the paranoia just means that you're already dashing into sight with the rays. Like, no one can see anything. There's sage slow orbs, henceforth slorbs. That's what we call them. Uh, coming down, just trapping the players that aren't able to sort of you dash into sight. Everything. Slorbs. slorbs, slow orbs. No one has time for that. Two syllables. That's too one much. of the ugliest words I think I've ever heard. Yeah. Well, you got the viper orbs, the vorbs, the mid orbs, the morbs. Wolf and almost being tagged down entirely. Down the spray coming in through the wall. Manages to get away with his life at least for now. The paint shells are ringing in everywhere. Cena looking to pop his head up as well and try and do some damage. Wolfen was there ready, but Zipan strikes first. Good reaction coming out from Nami, but it's not stopping Koi. Getting a bite back onto the other side, 4v4. Yeah, they're still completely stuck. They can't get out into main. There's a Cypher cage now that smokes have gone down. Mm. It's going to be real tough for them to accomplish much of anything. I love how Nami just fought so aggressively over it as well there. 
Like, weren't really looking to concede or give them heaven up and say, oh, yeah, Sight Shores will play for a retake. No, they planted their feet and said, we're going to fight this. Out. But Zenith's in a great spot again, almost into a three. Only found the two, but it's still miserable for Koi, who are now in a 2v3. Needs the smoke to go down when there's not two players right in front of him, and he <laughs> finds it. <laughs> nice. One more, almost manages to get his head into Shao as well, but Shao comes out on top. Shados, all that's left standing, and this is where Koi are going to be broke. Ooh, I don't know if this round is over just yet, because I think that tells him both players on to A with the plant. Shados gets ultimate. Sure, he's Good only point. 85 HP, but this left. is a hyper winnable round. Now, important for Navi, Shao's utility. There's so much to scout him out inside of it. Double Prowler, the Haunt, even a Cypher camera. So he got to pulled back. So they can try to do everything. But the fact is, Navi have split up, and that could be a big problem for them. We've seen that Stingham before as well. I mean, Shadows keeps checking in towards Garage here as well, so respect got to be given to the fact that you've got Shao coming up. He's got almost no HP to his name. A flick on, and they know what's going on. As you said, the utility is there to play with. They've got to find what they need. They've got the one versus one. The haunt was there as well, but it, it simply was not enough. So he gets to come around on full HP. Will he see him first? Yes, he will. So he gets to find his man. Should be able to get away with this one as well. Wow, the timing on that's so tough for Shados. You could see he was even aware. He thought, you know, a person could be wrapping around Pillar, but would have thought the Cypher would have been closer. Mm. It actually ends up being that Navi being so spread out is what caused him to second guess, want to go back into the pit. After those Viper nerfs, you got to get back in the pit real quick. Otherwise, it falls down, and he didn't want to live in a world with that. So CNED's work up in mid does. Oh, I didn't even notice Trex jumped. <laughs> the full jumping head shot, OK. Naughty. Look, he's just, he's just playing inside the Matrix. It's all part of it. And there's your montage you're asking for. The highs and lows, the duality of man. <laughs> the duality of Baba. -ba. Yeah, there's bar and there's bar, you know? <laughs> and there's one drink and then there's a few too many. <laughs> <laughs> Five, three then for Navi. And Koi coming in with their time out here as well. They want to get a bit more out of this first half, really. And understandably, a little bit of breathing room being sought. That last round, sure, nearly coming back. But so far, it's been Navi that have it feels stonewalled them at most opportunities. They've tried to push their way through. They got away with it for two or three rounds, and then Na'Vi started slamming that door in their face and not even giving them any map control to play with. I think one thing I'd like to see from Na'Vi is a little bit more uh, of the solo play, especially activating like a lurk. You know, if, if they play through mid, look to break down the Sage Wall that looks to be coming in, uh, you know, around that 120 mark. Cnet really likes that wall for holding their back and then focusing into mains. I think they can put the bulk of their forces up into mid and then get Shadoff doing a little bit more. He's been playing mostly extremity control as opposed to actually trying to find a timing, which I think might be a little bit of a, of a misstep or a missed opportunity. You don't always have to be looking for the lurk, but so far it hasn't even been conditioned into the minds of Na'Vi. And uh, especially with all the, the fighting that's gone on on this oh, side, what? wow. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's not quite the way to do it. You said you wanted to see slow and they go, no, we have to end a no. We're going to turn the set warp and you can see exactly how it's bit them. Paint shells comes raining on through it. Oh, it did a bit of chip there, but not really anything coming on. Starto into another. Angel now down as well. That's kind of the two trump cards for this round. Gone for Na'Vi. I mean, the, the fast play just exposes how Na'Vi changed their setup. All of a sudden, the Sage playing aggro, and Shao finds a kill. Op is a curse this round. It's not getting any kills, Ender. What is going on? Madness. And it looks like Sugetsu is playing inside of his camera really late, expecting that Lurks to come in. But this round, I think, is going to be all about Zipan on that flank. Can he find one? If he gets two, this round winnable. Well, he's been spotted out already. They know exactly where he is. He's managed to find one. Can he find the second? No. Cold is a little bit too good for him this time around. And I wonder if Na'Vi once again here to shop to peel back, save up, and to say, yeah, yep. never mind. And here they go. For sure, for sure. He, he needed, needed the two out. there. If there were two, all of a sudden, those players are zooming into sight. Exits. Really want the exit, but yep. no, not being given. Yeah, and really what it comes down to is like the, the reason the fast hit worked in my eyes is because the, the Sage was holding with an operator. Obviously, they killed the operator. That makes it easier to go into sight. But then the stall utility behind it isn't quite there. The Omen is out of position to have that gorgeous paranoia. Omen paranoia from heaven doesn't do really anything. That, that's a really, it doesn't hit everyone. Whereas opposed to back, back plat or uh, back pillar, it can be really, really effective. So. I think Navi need to go back to more of their default setup here to, to avoid these fast execs coming into B. Although, I'd be surprised to see another setup like that uh, from Koi. Maybe they just faint it early on this time around, try to scout out Angel, who has been playing a little aggressively over here. Right, maybe. This time around, at least, Angel in that right position like you called out. The paranoia being able to pass through pretty much the entirety of Garrett, as well as the passage in towards Sight. Could be big. In comes the Utah spam as well, nothing out of him. They don't yet know he's here. 
So could do some damage if they're not respecting this. Wait, does he see him? I think oh. Trek saw the shoulder. Or no, he's spamming the, the wood box behind him. Shadows That's what was going on. So not quite, but it does enough to force Koi back, who, despite burning a fair wacky utility on the march through, just respect the slow field coming out from the Sage and the fact that there's an omen sat there not, not to push any further. I love the second guessing, not, not wanting to commit all their bullets into the Sage wall. <laughs> Just the tap spray, also making sure they can maybe quicker reset if someone swings out on top of that one. That Lurk has yet to be activated, although there are opportunities for it on this next Viper Wall cycle. Actually looks like this dog just trying to see if they can find someone and get information on a rotate. Faint that they did walk up into heaven and pull a rotate, but this is always going to finish back into the B site. If they wait too long though, you have options. The nightfall on the retake, or even on the pre-take, can be pretty punishing. 30 seconds left. Neither side of it, nothing has really changed on site itself for Na'Vi. They've kept the players it. here they needed to before. Cosmic Divide coming across is an interesting one actually as well. Locks down some of the bad towards spawn push through. Not that it matters right now, three of them are still sat completely in front of it and ready to challenge as well. Smoke's coming out on top, you've got the Viper volleys coming down as well a lot to try and force them away, but CNET's already found two, it's a little bit too late, make it three and Zipan gets two of his own. Na'Vi were ready and waiting there and Koi, just looking a little bit lost in the source. Yeah, it's kind of hard I think for Koi to, to look for these split hits when it, they're looking like 3-2, two, 2-2, two, two, something like this. They only have the, the one really initiating utility piece in the sky. And they sort of sent both duelists up into heaven, weren't quite able to make it work. Xenia's position on site just absolutely carving them up. And uh, it was really just Shao's Nightfall that had to be used at the end of the day. Navi is sitting real nice here. And uh, Koi's best bet in this round, I think, can be going into the knives for Wolfen. It is a bit of a half buy. An FPX buy in the yeah, 11th round, as a matter of fact. Made it work so many times, it even got given a name. Ooh. Trek's finding one, good starting point. Given again, they're down in this round in terms of what they're bringing to the fat table, but both sides have won an eco out so far. Showing that ability to fight from behind and be quite tactical with what they have on side to play with. Now the spike is not in the sight. Uh, the, the team is, but the spike isn't. <laughs> is they're going to have to call the reinforcements. Again, right? <laughs> yeah. Don't Managed to get away with it this time round. They're still making space up front as well. Yeah, and you see, because they don't have a Heaven Smoke, they have to hug the left side as they run out there. Finally, it comes up, and they're able to go ahead and get that one down. But Navi can act very quickly on this. Just three players, though, and Trex has the counter ult. Spike planted. A momentary delay as they have the extra play catch up there. But now that they're there, everything turns onto Navi's side. Once again, stacking up at least a couple inside of screens, finding one on the push through. Wolf was in a good spot, but this satchel, do they know about still being here? <laughs> yeah. It turns out they do. And they tag him out as well. Showstopper comes out on top, expecting one in the corner, but no one is there. Starzo on the rotate round backside might find two, but no, it's a bit of a ring around the roses here on Pillar. One steps across and there's just one left. It's Zipan all by himself, and he's got three players to bring down here. Might not find one, won't find any. Starzo with a 3K in the round, a comfortable one for Koi yet again. Yeah, Koi finding that opener onto the Cypher just opened up the entire side. I don't even think they were expecting it to go as smoothly as it did. They slowed down the pace of the round after that, waiting for their cycles of utility. Curious on your thoughts for this. You're in the last round of the Harpy. You've got three ults to play. I'm sure you've got a couple on the other side. You've got the Showstopper available for Trex. You've got Starzo Seekers on. Really, when you're looking at the utility available, you'd favor it towards Koi. Why here, Na'Vi, with the timeout, do you think, in round 12? Uh, I think uh, probably just uh, coming in at the, the final half here, having some kind of idea, especially because uh, if I was the coach, I might not be super thrilled that we were playing in front of the Cypher Utility. Uh, two versus five on that fast A exec, right? You're thinking about it, it's like, oh, we have this haunt, this this great tool to sort of hit players when even when we're getting smoked off. Uh, maybe we have the, the Cypher trips as well, and they're just fighting right in front of them. So maybe changing uh, the idea of how they're holding that A site, taking a little bit more passive uh, setups, uh, as opposed to thinking too much about the ultimates. I do think that the raise is definitely going to be entering the conversation of Na'Vi, uh, especially when you're thinking about that, that raise, because a, a lot of the time, like, raise is either looking to, like, go up through maybe, like, B Heaven or just, like, blitzing out into B. I think that's how Koi have defaulted to, uh, after the last time out, for example, they went for a very fast B hit. So maybe Na'Vi expecting something similar uh, could be a, a read of theirs coming into this one. Well, similar sort of setup for Na'Vi now. They've sort of defaulted yeah. back into what we're so used to, right? Which has been normally the wall in towards mid, three stacking upon B and two out towards well, A. Well, this is different, though, because I do think they're reading fast B aggression, right? That's why the race is over here, why the fade, the omen, all of this stuff. Sage being on A is a bit of an anomaly. You can see it's actually a very uh, deep wall that gets instantly busted down. Here we go, the immediate TP over, making use of the old Angel as well to join the team on the A site. 
Don't often see it used too much in that sort of capacity, but they've managed to get players over here, which is the most important part. Key smokes have gone down, though. It has denied Na'Vi. Is this a fast rotate potentially coming in through ropes here as well? Looks like it is. They're going to show the option. I don't know if they necessarily commit off of this, because as soon as the are. flash connects, they might not want to keep on going. They get it, though. Oh, almost there you go. Showstopper comes out as well. This train ain't stopping. The fishes are flapping, they're on side to side as well, and no one's here to stop them. I think as soon as they heard Angels up, they just thought, okay, new plan here, push through ropes, hit the other side, we know they're light on the ground. Yeah, Navi. Really good read. Navi probably gonna want to play for that res up in heaven. Get that online for CNET. Koi really trying to hold for it. Not gonna let that one go over easy, and the wall was already used, so the spam could come in on this. Well, they've had to find the man as well. Someone Absolutely shoot him! Not. I mean, they were trying, but it looks fit. Tag down to 19, but not finished off. So much time being wasted oh, trying to hunt down for Shade. Oh, look at him playing with him. What is that? Well, Wolfen gets a kill on sight. And here they come. It's Five Nights at Freddy's dashing around. Everyone just got a <laughs> poke in their head and going peekaboo. And everyone's been waiting this time out of the shadows. Three quick, easy kills. And Koi really did take Na'Vi for a ride in that round. Switching sides. And somehow we finish it out 6 6. Mm. Looked like Na'Vi were in a real nice spot, but after that timeout came in. One from Koi's side. Whew, three out of the last four, bring things back to even. And uh, I really do think just all the time sort of wasted in mid, every player trying to jump out of heaven, that position, bottom rope, just tears them apart. Just felt like really there's a little bit of time to adapt from Koi, right? We had the first couple of rounds go the way, as I say, Na'Vi really sort of started to figure things out then. They'd play pretty well into Koi, but that last five, six rounds, overwhelmingly, Koi felt like they were really the ones in the driving seat. It really did. I mean, they, they looked like in the pistol, too. They were so decisive moving on in there. Now, Navi, been a little while since we've seen them back in uh, the Masters, but now they have that final chance to make it on through here. I think a disappointing showing for them uh, on the international stage with a team that always has so much hype behind them mm. after maybe a slightly disappointing year as well. Now the opportunity, but they got to get through Koi first here to stay up in the upper bracket. Looking at their, their comp though, things get a little bit funky because, uh, you know, they are playing just the solo rays to get on in there. In terms of actual enabling utility, not too much. Just really the, the paranoia. Maybe if they have some slower lineups, something like this, they can get a little bit more creative, but these rounds might be a little bit slower than you would anticipate. A little bit more play up through mid, whether or not they can suss out uh, isolated fights before fully committing. In the post plants, if they hold on to a sage wall, anything like this, they're going to look real, real strong. Don't get me wrong. That sage wall, if you can use it to, to stop one of the chokes for the defense to flood on in, it's going to look powerful. But this might be a little bit harder for them to navigate this half. You spoke earlier on, um, just going to go back to that point about it being a bit of a disappointing year for Na'Vi. Not for Inter into Valorant four or five months in the game. And when I came in, everyone was saying, really, Fnatic, Na'Vi, top two, they're the ones to watch. Yep. For Na'Vi, it has been a bit of a battle. The fact that they're here probably is one side away, straight away looking at it and going, okay, it hasn't really gone how they've intended. And I'm not going to say one half is enough to go off of, but Koi have given them a pretty fair challenge there, I think, to start out the map. Yeah, they absolutely have. It's going to be real dire. I mean, ultimately, again, it's not their map pick, but it's still... You know, if you're letting it go all the way through to three. Yeah, I mean, look. It'll be that chance of casting the, you down to the lower bracket. It's the same map pools last time they faced off against. Koi is the team that beat Na'Vi already. Yeah. This is uh, definitely uh, up for grab still. Na'Vi always, we know, have the talent. You might see some of their comps think it's a little bit funky. Like back in week one, they were busting out the gecko everywhere. <laughs> they're constantly changing what they're actually playing. But some of the consistents are always there. See Ned with the operator, whether it's the Jet or the, or the Sage, Angel looking to hunt down for early kills. That is the way he likes to play it. So we'll see what they've got for us on attack. 4-1 setup for the time being with Sugetsu looking to maybe lurk on that A side of the map or just play early containment. He got a forward camera that gets scouted out wow. and broken by Wolfen. And I mean, they tag Colder straight away. He knows that there's a lot of firepower heading this way. I'm mean, going to say a lot of firepower, I mean, relative to the round with pistols. Four of them all starting to flood in, at least initially. They've got sight. They may look to try and go for a plant here pretty early on as well, but they've left the spike <laughs> down towards spawn. They, they were surprised they didn't even run into that much uh, interference yeah. over on V, so it's all good. They can continue to work on through here. It does mean the, the timings of their smoke's going to be a little bit awkward because CT smoke will be falling relatively shortly, next five seconds. And then Angel <laughs> will have another, but you can see all the counter utility makes it really hard to get a plant down. The smoke into CT means hope uh, Heaven is going to remain open for a while. Showing a lot of respect towards the utility spam that came flying on through as well, quite smartly so. And now I can go back in for it again. So what, Koi are so seconds. ready. Koi knows Sugetsu's going to want to look for that lurk up mid. First flash comes out from that Starzo, burn through both of those in pretty quick time. 
On the Wolfen's step still holding mid. They're on the site. <laughs> Time to react, guys. Expecting a flank, maybe. I mean, we know exactly what Angel can be like, but they've got to worry about the site. They're getting slaughtered to where they stand, but so gets to. Is he pulling this one back here? They've got a bit of a crossfire on the go, but they've got to win it, and Wolfen doesn't lose those. Maybe gets one back. Starzo down to what? 11 HP, but it's enough to get the job done for Koi. Dark Zone and Wolfen were so reliable, I think, for Koi yesterday. And again in the pistols, you think back to the first half now here, too. It's coming down to them. Securing both pistols on split. Fantastic way to kick off this second half for them. And it comes after such a delayed round, right? Koi play almost full retake on B. The utility to, to stall out that plant almost caused some problems for Na'Vi. And then the retake looking very, very crisp from them. It's beautiful stuff. Koi just looking, although towards the end, threatened by so I would argue for the most part, very comfortable in the round. Now we get to see how things carried on as they did at the very start of this game going into the second round. It was a very comfortable closeout for Koi as well. Expecting the same here, but again, both teams have lost an eco or two in this game so far. So don't count Na'Vi out just yet. Yeah, they've got four sheriffs in hand, so definitely some options. Angel oh, yeah. is just out on B and, and finding is. the opener, by the way. Yep, that's what just happened. He's not going to take any more space off of that. Probably the right call, looking to play with numbers here and regroup is, oh, good timing from Trex, we'll find a kill, but you can see Koi putting themselves in positions, just take those fights straight up. Kind of the way you have to play this comp that has so little Done information, here. no cipher, the sky info not being super reliable outside of the dog. So you'll see a lot of these peaks into mid, a lot of pressure put into the hands of a player like Trex to be winning those fights in mid, otherwise your site is just gonna get exploded from those split hits. All starting to gear their way up for an A as the last two players work their way in through sewers here. Stacking up on four. Koi still with his 2 2 spread across both sites. This is a good chance for Na'Vi to get what they need. They've got a bit of utility on side. Smoke's starting to come out here as well. Haunt comes through. So they can make their entry in towards site here, but they've got to respect Wolfen. One enemy Pain. Spike Said about it being the eco as well, and I think the respect being shown by Koi there to give the space and just play for those longer angles. Easy close out at the end of the day. I'm really curious how Navi continue to play the rest of this half because Pistol Round obviously looked like they grouped up and wanted to go for fast execs or like the Sage Wall just to scale out. But I think their rounds are going to devolve or evolve, however you want to look at it. They're going to change, morph into a little bit more of this slow play, like 1-3-1 one, one setup where like maybe Angel's looking to scout out over towards B, play a little more aggressive. You're always going to have Sugetsu set outside of A. And uh, you know he's going to be looking to take some timings just for those cage lineups. You can put one blocking off main, one blocking off ramp, and look to move on forward, which is actually why Koi are set up with the sky on this area of the map for early scouting, early breaking of that camera that Sugetsu has shown uh, two, maybe all three rounds so far. It's a slow crawl towards mid. Don't be worried about the swing that could come in here from the Viper. They're aware of the presence, the Haunt being shot okay. out. I think it was a dead giveaway at the back of that one. Ray's not having the angle because of the smoke. Just taking their time on this one and really trying to figure it out. In fact, smoking into Wars Heaven themselves. Yeah. So not wanting to play that angle just yet. Just wanting to threaten that they could cross into vents. You know, if there's any player uh, actually pushed they into could ramp. and will. Yeah, they, well, <laughs> if you're pushed out ramp, you have to fall back because you can't just watch main anymore. You have to worry about getting ramp behind. So it makes it a lot more difficult to actually play Heaven as a solo player. You can see uh, Shados is trying to navigate it for the time being, just taking the risk that no one walks up. Uh, of course, he has the, the jet holding for him for now, but once those cages get popped, mm. he's going to have to turn his attention over. Actually, maybe Angel has slipped a time here if his players in main show and the viper turns around he could get something could be in the big word to focus on there wolfen was on the swing but seen was there first now shados is looking the wrong way but he's inside of smoke as well sure enough there it he is. comes and there it is angel sinking his teeth into with the bat line looks for a second but star zone a little bit too on it today unfortunately that was really good lurk timing, though. You can see just working with the team, everything thought through. Now the retake, heavy towards ramps. Oh, okay. Now, where previously we saw Shao respect the utility, CNED did not. <laughs> I think they're trying to wait for a flash. Starzo doesn't have anything. One swing comes through. They're expecting him to push down, but no one's doing it yet. One above and just gets pulled into that. Two more kills for Koi. Starts to feel like this one might be slowly starting to slip away if Na'Vi aren't too careful. Not forgetting this is their full gun round. Zipan, you can find one. Simply not enough. Two left standing for Koi. Up they go, nine and six.
God, I, I love rounds of Valorant like this. They <laughs> get a little bit drawn out. Everyone's looking for the timing from Angel, making that timing on the Lurk happen so he could get his one, to then having no flash to reclear ramp. Koi having to get a little creative using the, the satchels to play that element of verticality and the Goomba stomp down on the opposition. That was very nicely done. Actually just tracking and being able to see over the smoke, spotted out that Cypher. And now Wolfen's on the op. Oh yeah. It's not quite a bulldog man, though. <laughs> Man's leveled up. <laughs> and if he's posting himself out towards where B here, trying to play yeah. back site, they'll be doing some damage. And this is why even like people look at double duelist comps and I'm like, yeah, they're good on attack. But it, doing this as opposed to just the raise means you get a reliable op. You get the second best op agent in the game, depending on situations. Chamber and Jet both do it very nicely. But then also all that stall power to catch Utah on the opposite side of the map. And Navi have to get past that with a paranoia with Prowlers to scout out that op, that's going to be tough. A round four op, ooh. Well, here we go, ready to swing onto Soigetsu here. So he's being bullied inside of his own spawn. He's looking rough, oh, but finds one. Tried to look for the second, but Tretz gets him with the paint shells. Will one be good enough? It's just Shados, that utility set up over towards A, so if it turns into a B hit, eh, it doesn't really matter too much. We'll see if they can isolate the op, though. They can't. It is. <laughs> I mean, he's straight out of there. Zipan was looking for blood, looking for vengeance. That's the trouble. You just got to contact into every site. Wolfen is going to be a constant problem for them, forcing them to plant safe here, too. Can't really hold for main, and uh, can't hold for main when Trex is just eyeing you down. Here comes the party, baby. Trex is killing everybody. Straight in there. He's like, ah, 4v2. Nah, it's time for the ult. Why not? Pulls it out regardless. Finds himself a 4k in the round. I said it last round, but Koi really starting to run away with this one. This is their sixth round in a row they've won now. Ouch. So here come the difficulties, right? <laughs> with, like they weren't already here. <laughs> here. Here they really are, right? Is how do you deal with the operator? Because, like, yeah, maybe you can scout out with a Prowler, but Prowler doesn't last as long as something like a Sova Drone. Also doesn't give you perfect info. It doesn't give you actual eyeballs on that angle. You don't have a, a Breach Concuss or something like this, a Sky Flash to force players off the angle. It becomes really challenging. So do you try to then lurk? Well, if you lurk, then you're also potentially just walking into the crosshair of an operator. It becomes very, very challenging. And I think almost the best bet is going to be Sugetsu trying to play around to his smokes, find lurk timings into A while they slowly move into mid. It is not going to be simple, though, that's for sure, from Navi's side. And it'd be lovely to be able to look at the ults on the side of Navi and say, hey, actually, they're, you know, two or three pips away from having three more ults online. But similar to Heretics yesterday on map number one, Fracture, I believe it was, mm. they had four ultimates that we didn't really consider these power ults they can really use to make change yep. happen in the rounds. And here, they've got two, sure. They've got the Showstopper, they've got the Nightfall. But they need both of those online, and they've got to try and match up against what keeps them coming in from the other side, which really is Wolfen with his own ultimate yeah, yeah. and an up on side and enough bank to buy another full round it'll be good for one round but how can they turn this into two three or four to not let this game run away yeah it is starting to add up here look zip and Xiao both pretty close to their ults i think just one off uh money wise it will just be sheriff's light armor i think that ends up being the call for them so koi likely moving into 11. but after that for navi the question is like maybe they try to sort of flood out into sites and sort of accept one player dies but with omen teleporting into sight raise the satcheling too they can look to attempt to trade out the jet that teleport not being perfect, but they also have to just commit so many smokes, I think, to take space around an area like mid. Koi, you're getting aggro. Oh I my love it. God. I love it. Absolutely love that. Yeah. Two Bye. kills out of nowhere. I didn't even notice Trex picked up the op over uh, on yeah, A. Yeah, they changed it over. Yeah, because they wanted to look for the aggressive play. With so Jet smart. having the option to, you know, fight through, dash out, they're like, wait a second, Trex is offing? What the hell, guys? I Come love it. On. Because, you know, after a timeout is when teams have normally got something cooked up. They've got a plan in mind they want to execute. The best time to hit them hard yeah. is there and then. Beautiful Keeps play from Koi. And just again, not it's same against Heretics. They didn't look to really give them much room to operate with yesterday. It's the same here. Yeah, and I think Koi showed uh, yesterday too, the delayed aggression where it's 15, 20 seconds and then when they snap you, because coming out of timeout, you expect something fast or you expect nothing at all. You know, finding that middle ground has options it. to really punish. Sugetsu has played that lurk so many times. You, you know when, when a player is jump peeking back pillar there, you want to quickly scoot out between their jumps so you can try to aim for the head when they come around the corner. Only is able to find the tag damage, though. And uh, there's the op. It's moved around the map Spike completely. Down, Remember where everyone was at the start of the round and Jet yeah. was pushing mid? Now Jet's pushing A. The op that was, you know, on Ray's back screens is now in B Heaven. Like, I don't know. I'd be frustrated. 
Nothing no, is no. as it seems. No, uh, information is good for all of about 10 seconds against Koi, yeah. it feels. At the minute. All of a sudden, one plus one doesn't equal two. You know, uh, <laughs> a, a circle is a circle. It equals five because Koi said so. Yeah, Koi just get to decide the rules. You know, like, why is a foot 12 inches? I don't know. Some dude's foot. Koi's foot is five in. I don't know. We're in the sauce. We're back in it. All right, uh, Navi, I... Oof. I hate to deflate like this. So let's inflate. Navi have four ultimates ready to go, baby. What do they got for us? 1.05 as well. Again, like where, where Wolfen's playing is trying to catch early with the op. Here's the teleport coming in. So they're trying to threaten to do something, just embedding the lurk, but it doesn't really do much of anything. Wolfen is going to be confident to continue holding this. There's nothing truly to force him off the angle. If they do move into this, they have Prowlers as an option. By him holding forward, they can do something about it, but if they walk into it... Oh, no. Oh. I've seen that a few times, really. It, B is the curse site for Ops this game. A lot of missed yeah. shots coming down on that side of the map. A has been much more successful. The crazy thing is, too, if CNED goes down, he's the one with the res, right? He can't bring himself back up, so him having res allows the one-for-one -one trade to be realistic. Showstopper's in, and as much as Trex tries, he simply cannot get away. Cold Immense is good for two, though. That's what they're looking for before he gets shut down. Out comes Wolfen and just cannot land the knife to save his life. Gordon Ramsay would be disappointed. Exactly Three on the back of sight here, pushing their way forwards. All the ult starting to get rolled out here by Na'Vi. The red carpet is there. Shados, all that's left standing. He's got to find two, finds one. Just one more left. You can really oh. bring them here! And Shados shatters the Na'Vi mental. Up to match point they go, a six round advantage, despite Na'Vi throwing the proverbial kitchen sink at them. The yeah, inside's just a jungle gym. He's just going up and down the rope, doing absolutely everything. And this was like a worst case scenario round for Koi too, right? They lose a couple players on the entry, the knives aren't connecting, but Shados dancing around like that, up and over, like, Shao doesn't have a moment to breathe. Shados is just constantly looking for the fight. Well, this second half has been nothing short of absolute domination by Koi. Again, look how many ults were burnt. Three ults okay. came out in that round. The Nightfall's still available for them. It's the one big ult they've got. But immediately, Koi had a side right. Viper's pit mid, that is now offline. Choose your poison. Oh, wow, there's a gap in that Viper wall. Allows CNET to hold the angle, but you still can't really get through it. The stall of the, the decay, the, the mollies, potential poles on the ground from the Aster too. They gotta wait out this cycle, and when the cycle comes down, guess what? That B operator's rotated over. Of course it has. Why wouldn't it have? I'm sure Navi is saying to themselves, Trex picks off one more. The Navi's number's just whittling down towards zero here. Three left standing. So that clock passes into the last 60 as well. Here. Waiting for the timings here. They've got them back online, but now they've got to start making the move. They've got to find something because there are two players coming on a massive flank in sewers. They're stuck kind of behind this trip, but they can hold for oh. entirely. Do oh. you go sewers or do you go spawn? Oh. Do you split up? Are no! you kidding me? <laughs> Not ideal. And now they've got to be so wary of the fact there's two more trying to push them. Sees the waste, but not like it matters. Straight into the molly. It's an absolute slaughter. Koi really schooling Na'Vi here on that one. Not a single round on their attacking side for Na'Vi. That is a tough way to kick off the series. Now, not over just yet by any means. We got a Lotus, potentially a scent to finish things off. Those are the two maps that uh, Koi was victorious in the regular season on, however. I just look back at that early in the season. Honestly, I really thought we'd see a different Na'Vi turn up, especially here on map one as well.